Okay, welcome everyone to this series, What is Algebraic Graph Theory? So um, yeah, I would like to talk about this really, really beautiful mixture between, well, what can you, what do we guess? Algebra and graph theory, kind of point here. Uh, or uh, matrices and graphs and polynomials and graphs and whatever type of object in algebra you have and graphs, which is essentially um, about one of the most underrated facts in mathematics altogether, which we will already sketch today, but it's also one of the most applicable fields of mathematics. Um, it's, it's absolutely great. I mean, graphs, you can use graphs to model everything you want, essentially. And algebraic graph theory just means you uh, at, uh, ask questions and attack questions about graphs using algebraic methods. And algebra is just powerful. Algebra is one of the most powerful tools in mathematics that you have available. So you can answer um, very complicated questions, actually, about graphs using algebra. And that's pretty cool because graphs, as I said, just model everything and they appear everywhere. And this is what this field is all about. And I really like it. I'm essentially a big fan of both algebra and graph theory. So this is uh, really good for me, I guess. Um, anyway, I hope you will enjoy it as well. Um, so today we kind of sketch a little bit what we will do, and then we jump into some really, really beautiful ideas uh, connected kind of, as I said, in this mixture between algebra and graph theory. So to get started, so graph theory is certainly ridiculously applicable. Although as a theory, so as, as part of a field of mathematics is fairly new, maybe 40s, 50s of the last century, um, the underlying ideas are really, really old. So you can model essentially everything with a graph um, from very, very different things, uh, like from a neural network, which is a brain. So your brain is a graph. Our brain is a graph, and essentially what you do, you have, you have the neurons, and they're connected, and you get uh, vertices for the neurons and edges for the connections, and then um, you can kind of, for example, a cool example is you can kind of tell how old the brain is by looking at lengths of cycles and all, all that fun stuff. It's, it's really, really amazing. The brain is a graph, and you can really model it uh, as a graph, and it's really, really powerful. On the other end, also a very, very uh, well-known and actually beautiful example is not a neural network, but a social network. Whatever, Facebook or YouTube in some sense is also a social network, a TikTok or whatever you want. Um, and you can just model it by being people, being the, the vertices and connections is something like friendship or whatever is applicable to your social network. And then you can figure out kind of cluster points and cycles and all that fun stuff. And it, it, it's really, really amazing. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say is graph theory is absolutely fantastic. It just models essentially everything. So if you're a street planner, you use graph theory. Your brain is graph theory. Your social network is graph theory. Graph theory is graph theory. So we need to understand graphs. Um, and that turns out to be uh, rather tricky. So there are a lot of questions about graphs which are not so easy to uh, to attack. Um, they are always usually very easy to state. It's like some combinatorial problem. But combinatorial problems don't need to be easy to answer. Because usually there's no like silver bullet to do it or kind of no algorithm to do it. You kind of need to design your solution by hand, which is very nice in some sense, but also not really good in some other sense. So it's much better to have a, a big hammer type theory because you can just hammer everything to death. And a big hammer type theory is algebra. Algebra is essentially one theory. Um, and as right graph theory is just jumping through fields. So for example, you can think of associating uh, a graph to a matrix and then study the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of that matrix. So here is kind of a distortion of a picture of some animal type object. Let me just call it some animal type object. And uh, in the distortion, you can see the eigenvector, for example, of the distortion. And so graph, so this is part of linear algebra, which I will now count as part of algebra itself. So algebra, the big hammer type object, graph theory, what we want to do. So why not put it together? So studying discrete objects, graphs, using algebraic objects, um, matrices and friends. 
So algebra and friends. And this is really a cool idea, actually. And it applies, it applies several times and it's really good. And we kind of want to, I will show you some really beautiful examples how this is applied. The first one already, kind of the main observation that will keep us going for a while is the completely underrated fact. So if you want the fact that is underrated in mathematics, here is one, graphs and matrices are actually the same objects. So graphs and matrices are the same objects. Matrices are part of linear algebra, graphs are part of combinatorics. So there is a very direct uh, relationship between graphs and matrices, also between combinatorics and linear algebra. And the way this works, let's do the very, very simple case for today, is you just number your vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this corresponds to numbering your uh, rows and columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, and also the columns in the same way, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you just look at the connections. So here, one is connected to two and five. One is connected to two and five. Aha, there you go. So you get a zero one matrix, in this case, from just the graph. So let's do another one. Four is connected to six, five, and three. Four is connected to three, five, and six, which were the same as before. I just read them in a different order. Anyway, and so on. So you get a matrix. Um, a zero one square matrix in this case from a graph. And it's essentially the same information encoded. So I just showed you how to go from here to here, but of course you can go from here to here in the very same way, but just writing down the vertices and adding the edges. So this is really the same type of information, which is the whole uh, way, the whole point why algebraic graph theory is kind of the starting point of algebraic graph theory. So now we can study properties of our little graph here using matrices. And we could also do the other way around. Turns out you can, there are some examples and I'm definitely going to show you some, but most kind of uh, properties you want to know are about graphs and you use the tools from linear, from algebra, in this case, linear algebra to, uh, to attack them. But in principle, we can go actually go back and forth because it's the same type of data. And this is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated facts in all of mathematics. A graph is a matrix and the matrix is a graph. And you can beef that up, you can add different numbers and you get slightly different objects, but we will see that uh, later um, in, in future videos. For, to, for today, this is just the correspondence here. I hope this makes it reasonably clear why you should be able to use algebra methods in graph theory. Just if you already have on the very basic level here, this, this beautiful connection between uh, graphs and matrices. So what we will do is we will actually start with this graph and matrices uh, part, and we will apply it to very different problems, like coloring problems and cycles and distances and random walks and all that. So a lot of things that are kind of pure graph theory, you kind of translate them into the uh, notion of matrices and solve a matrix problem, which is pretty, pretty cool, which is really, really great. And that's the whole point about algebraic graph theory. So there's a lot of things to talk about and I really, really love it, but it's, it's not stopping with matrices. We will then go a little bit deeper into algebra. We can associate groups to graphs. We can associate polynomials to graphs and even homology theories to graphs and more and more and more. So there's a very deep connection between a graph theory and algebra. We just start with kind of the easiest one, uh, the matrix one, which is easy, but also powerful at the same time. So it, it solves, in some sense, all the coloring type problems and so on. It's, it's just ridiculously beautiful. Ridiculously beautiful, one of, my, one of my favorite fields, just this beautiful connection between the hammer algebra and kind of the applicable theory, uh, graph theory. So let me get you started with an example, which we'll then discuss in one of the future videos. So essentially a coloring problem is a problem about eigenvalues of the adjacency matrix. So adjacency matrix is just this object here uh, of a graph. So you can reformulate a coloring problem into here are eigenvalues. So this is how eigenvalues really look like uh, of a huge matrix plotted into uh, well the, the complex plane or R2, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, anyway, there's some patterns within uh, as you can see, obviously, there are some patterns within um, the eigenvalues. So in particular, the 
funny circle around we'll see the funny circle around certainly again uh, very often in this in this video series and you use the eigenvalues of a matrix to uh to solve graph theory problems in this case a coloring problem isn't that amazing i mean i'm not going to show you right now how that works but you'll see that but uh, the idea itself is just ridiculously amazing and i i get values like i get values and when i when i was uh, learning linear algebra for the first time i was like eigenvalues so why should i care about eigenvalues it's just eigenvalues are fantastic and here's another way of i was so naive eigenvalues are fantastic and here's another way of seeing that it's just a really unrelated unrelated in quotation marks problem and you solve it in um using eigenvalues and coloring problems are among the most important problems of uh of mathematics in general so this is what we're going to see going from colorings to eigenvalues and back which is an absolutely amazing um here's another one so one of my favorite applications of the whole story is well how did you end up finding this video maybe using google potentially maybe using youtube youtube search engine i'm not 1 percent sure whether it's uh, similar to the one from google but you could kind of guess that it is anyway so google search engine is called the page rank and it's essentially modeling the World Wide Web as a graph. And then you use the well, spectrum of the adjacency matrix to kind of rank uh, the, the web pages in order. So kind of the reason why you found this video is what this video will discuss, or this video series rather, <laughs> namely how to use, uh, well, how to well, first model life using graph theory. That's what Google does. And then apply algebra methods to study graphs, and that was Google does as well. So one of my favorite examples here. So it, it lists web pages in an order, the page rank, and uh, and what it really uses is a spectrum. So it's kind of the same picture as here. We will see more than just spectrum. I just buy two examples here were about eigenvalues. Um, so again, you use the eigenvalues of the adjacency matrix. Anyway. So one of my favorite, one of my favorite fields of mathematics, algebraic graph theory. Why is it so fantastic? I know I sound like a broken record. I will say it again because I think it's very important. Graph theory, super applicable. Brain, page rank, Facebook, graph theory. And you just want to solve some problems about graph theory, whatever, coloring problems, uh, past problems, lengths of cycles, something like that. And you can do that combinatorially. But usually it's better to use a hammer. And that's where algebra enters because algebra is essentially the hammer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.